we are just making cuts in the concrete with a demo saw and I'm sitting there with a hose spraying the blade of the demo saw and then sucking away the dust that's be being kicked up by the saw blade. It worked pretty well. The demo saw has some sort of quick coupling on it and I, I bought the fitting but it was leaking water all over the place so we ended up not using that and this worked really well. We made a few surface cuts in the concrete using the saw and then we came back through and just followed those initial cuts where we would sink the blade in all the way.
We're reinforcing the pads right now. So as you can see, I have actually reinforced the pads before. This square right here is me, or where I tried to reinforce the pad once before. So we're trying to reinforce the area underneath the base of the lift. And here is the base of the lift. The problem is my original pad was nearly the same size as the, the base of the lift. So the bolts would be too close to the, the cutting joint right here. This is the cutting joint. But my old cutting joint was in a lot farther. So the bolts that would be used on the base of the lift would be too close to those joints. And maybe it wouldn't have failed. Maybe it would have been strong enough, but it's something that we just don't want to take a chance with because we're going to be underneath these cars, wrenching on them, um, exerting a lot of torque, um, you know, taking motors out, things like that. So we just don't want to risk it. So why, why should we? Our approach to this was um, we, we were going to dig this all out and then we were going to key in underneath the existing slab. So once we had the pit dug, we were going to dig six inches in all direction at every side of these um, cubes that we're digging out. And we were going to do that to, to basically key in the uh, new slab so it had nowhere to move. Based on all the extensive research I've done, um, the you could either do, key it in underneath the slab or you could add rebar dowels into the existing slab. So naturally we did both and I'll show you that in a minute. Believe it or not, that's just getting started. We are digging these down two feet. I'll check our depth. <clears throat> okay, so this one's currently at around 18 inches or so. Got a couple more inches to go, but this is the deepest part of this one. I already started to hit dirt. We're gonna go down into the dirt a little bit, but before I get to the dirt, I'm just gonna remove all the gravel. The gravel is really hard to dig through. I did not record the last couple hours of my life because I've been digging this even deeper hole. I dug it down two feet. We're making this thing as strong as possible. And we're basing this two feet on standard house footings that are used in residential construction. But it was really, getting through the gravel was pretty difficult and then I thought the, the earth would be a little easier when I got there but it ended up being really hard, cold clay. 
So it wasn't as easy as I thought. Now for the next one. Both holes are finally dug out and I don't think I have to go to the gym for at least a week because that was a lot of work. On this hole right here, um, it's you can see it's, it's really skewed. I had to dig way off to the side because there was a root system down here and it was just a ton of wood so I had to break through it all and find some more stable ground under there. So there's like the main part of the root system that actually looks kind of like the base of a tree or something like that. But I was able to dig enough of it out that there's a lot for the cement to grab onto um, or to sit on down there. So it would be impossible for this thing to shift over to that side. And then the slab was thick over here near the wall. So we actually couldn't cut all the way through it. But it'll be good because it'll actually uh, lock this whole thing in place once we get it all poured. You know, it's not going to like uh, tip up this way because it'll be locked in right here. But overall, it was a lot of work. Um, but we're better off doing it, um, you know, overkill than underkill. Uh, we don't want this stuff to shift at all. And we're going to be doing some pretty serious work on this lift. Um, here's the lift right here. And our next step is to lay out the bolt pattern, uh, remeasure everything again, and then we're gonna place rebar in here in such a manner that it's not gonna interfere with the bolt pattern uh, on the bottom of these posts. Um, and then we'll pour the cement. Let's be real. You've never seen such a beautiful, beautiful hole dug in a slab of concrete, have you? Neither have I. I don't actually have any video footage of the concrete pour because we were shorthanded that day, so there were just not enough hands to record and pour at the same time. Sorry about that. Here are the completed reinforced concrete pads. And it's been a couple weeks now, so they're dry. This is 6,000 PSI cement. And the existing cement right here is probably around 2,500 PSI. These pads are 30 inches by 30 inches and over 24 inches deep. They undermine the existing slab around the edges, so they go under the existing slab approximately six inches. And they're doweled in each side has two or more um, rebar dowels. Then we put two beds of rebar in each of these. There's a bed of rebar at the bottom and then there's one closer to the top. And before we did any of this, we measured it all out. These are our measurements here. And we had the bottom of this removed. So we had the actual uh, bolt pattern on this lift base. And we used that bolt pattern and we, we made sure that our rebar underneath um, the cement would not interfere with, um, with the bolts. So we're going to be bolting this lift in from the top. We want to make sure the rebar would not interfere with those.